In the second part of the Sophistic 2018 New Features Online Presentation Series, I like to present general features of the SSD 2018 and present new features and new tasks for the Sophistic Structural Desktop. Looking at the new features brochure in the section Sophistic Structural Desktop, you get an overview about new features and improvements within the Sophistic Structural Desktop, starting with configurable unit sets and new US codes for design and analysis. We provide features like DOCX output support, improved general usability and redesigns for the section dialogues, super positioning and finally new features in the earthquake task. Before we continue, I'd like to show you some new features in the Sophistic Structural Desktop 2018. I open Sophistic Structural Desktop 2018 and use a simple example project which was taken from the template section, the flat slab SSD template. Looking at the system information dialog in the section unit set, you see one of the improvements regarding unit sets. There are two completely new revised unit sets um, specially accustomed for US customary units. One unit set which favors the feed length units for the Ashdor bridge design application and one unit set which is featuring an inch length preset. All unit sets which you see here in this selection of unit sets, like for example the metric system for this example project, can now be accessed and the different units can be modified and influenced regarding their precision. Looking further on in the documentation, we should see that new features like the 2014 version of the Ashto and the latest revision of the ACI 318 have been implemented in Sophistic 2018. Please make sure that you consult the respective module documentations for detailed information about implemented features. So please see for the AQP and BMS document PDF manuals in the section norm to check for specifically implemented features. One of the interesting new features is that we provide an additional format for printed output. In the first implementation you can now activate the docx output in the project options by clicking this office document switch enable docx output. So for every task or for every section which you calculate and run parallel to the PLB report browser output you are provided with a docx word compatible document. Please note well that, for example, the new tables are now really supported as Microsoft Word format uh, tables. Please note well that not all features of the PLB report browser output are yet supported by this option. So this option to generate docx output is meant to be a starting point and help you for better documentation, but does not provide a complete feature set which is offered by the report browser. Continuing here with the overview of the new features, you shall see that several tasks have new output or control parameter options. For the next um, interesting new features, I open another example project to show you new dialogues in the field of standard cross-sections. So the whole cross-section dialogues have been redesigned. 
So for every standard cross-section, there's a different family of input dialog. This input dialogs should help the user to access and see cross-sectional and input options much easier by using a new layout and an interactive graphical preview with the most important dimensions and local axes. In the field of superpositioning, we offer a new task which should provide the possibility to combine results on a result basis. So, for example, if we consider this steel frame structure with several load cases like self weight, a life load pattern, and the wind, we are usually in steel design interested in combining the results of linear load cases. So if this linear load case combination is valid, we can now use a new task after the computation of the linear results to combine only the result side of the results. So without recalculating the load cases, which might be required for running a theory of second order p-delta analysis, we can directly use a combination of results to obtain a combination with specific factors. So this new task, Sophistic Combined Results, allows in a similar way to combine linear results to a new load case result. So in this case, we combined the automatic self-weight with a factor of 1.35 with a life load pattern and a wind. After running this task, you see that the program maxima is handling this task with a new feature, which is namely the sum feature to directly add the results without any additional superpositioning or maximization of results. So after running this input, we can use WinGraph to visualize the results for example bending moments of beams for this combination summation of linear results. Finally, the next task is our earthquake task. A very often requested feature from our users was that this task should also support the consideration of accidental eccentricities. So now the earthquake task in version 2018 allows with a completely redesigned tab the specification of first of all the directions of the earthquake action and then allows to add the eccentricities in the respective directions. So by simply activating the consideration of an earthquake from the x direction plus the respective eccentricity and the corresponding y direction, we are able to add the Accidental, accidental eccentricity value and select, for example, the levels for the application of these eccentricities. Running the task with the standard or the defined response spectra, we have now the possibility to directly calculate this um, accidental eccentricity effects. So you see during the calculation, there are several Dyna blocks calculating this, different directions and the different directions with, this, with the respective eccentricities. In the output, you should see that now for every direction, you get, for example, here, the sum of forces in terms of the base shear together with level information which was input in the table we have seen before and the tab directions of the earthquake task. So with these features users are now able to uh, consider the accidental eccentricity facts 
which are specified, for example, in Eurocode 8, and consider them in a response spectra earthquake analysis. Further new features of SSD tasks range from new consideration of creep active permanent load cases for the column design using the column design tasks to new features for the steel design, especially for the stability checks and buckling resistance checks of steel members. Looking at an example for this stability checks, we again look at our steel frame and consider the steel buckling resistance of members task. Looking at the input of this buckling resistance of member task, we should see another feature, which is that lateral torsional buckling checks can now be performed according to both methods specified in Eurocode 3, namely method 1 and method 2. More importantly, in the selection tab, the members under consideration, we can now select members like this structure line and provide information about intermediate supports and lateral restraints. For example, in lateral restraints, we might be able to add additional supports along our member under consideration. It should be noted well that in the lateral restraints options, there is only an equal spacing, an end mid or a relative spacing available. Whereas at the intermediate support options, we have the possibility to support a structure line for this member check on already specified structural points. So for this example, we consider one of these structural lines here at the side of our steel frame. This transverse girders here are not visible for the member check, but however, the subdivision along this member has produced three structural points along the member. So we are now able, after selection of this member for our stability check, to access the three structural points and to specify that we want to have a transverse fix support. So with this feature, we can now add additional supports along our structural line. After calculation of this stability checks, we can also investigate the support conditions in the tables provided by the program BDK during the member check. Looking at the results, we can identify that we, um, we should see the utilization factors and uh, can influence the utilization and the member check by specifying this intermediate supports. Finally, a new family of tasks for the SSD allows the user to enable a full graphical workflow for bridge design. The new CSM bridge design task family allows the user to start with a bridge project, which is run with an analysis, a construction stage sequence, and take this construction stage sequence calculated with CSM one step further towards the design procedure. So in this project, we have inserted new task for bridge design, which is the family of the CSM bridge design tasks. There are several types of this task in this family. There is one task for the design checks of beams and one task family for the design checks of area element bridges. In this example, after the calculation of the construction stages, we have one CSM bridge design task with deals, which deals with the superpositioning of the actions. So in this case, you see here, in this project, we have specified the live load actions containing load model one for the vertical 
live load. In addition, there was, is an action for temperature and an additional action for differential settlements available in this project. So with this task, the user is guided to through the correct definition of action and the pre-superpositioning for the design of the bridge. So of course, these two tasks do write an input for the construction stage manager DAISY mode and specify how these actions should be accounted for in ULS and SLS. So the next step for these two design tasks is to select the envelopes and the requested features for the bridge design. So the next task is called the Sophistic Bridge Design Beams task and allows the user to select what are the parameters for the different design checks. So in this case, you see the user requested a check print, a ULS check, crack control and all stress limitations and the compression check. With this additional information, you can also identify that these graphical tasks do currently support DIN Fachbericht, Eurocode, and um, basic variations of Eurocode, like for example German DIN or Austrian ÖNorm. So, with the next um, tab, you can also select beam elements for the output. So, this next step allows to control the bridge design with a complete graphical workflow. So, in this case, you see here the familiar output of the CSM bridge design task.